Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I'm really excited about the 2021 boa breeding season. I think it's going to be my best season yet, and today I want to give you guys an update. So I'm going to go over my predictions for the litters of locality boas I expect to have on the ground shortly. I'm going to show you some of my gravid females as well as my recently born Pearl Island boa babies. And a lot of you guys have been asking about how you can possibly acquire one of my boas for your collection. So I'm going to say a little bit more about how we can make that happen. So be sure to stay tuned for that. As you may know if you've been following the channel, 2021 was my most ambitious breeding season yet with a total of 14 pairings of locality boas. And I set these up way back in December, so it's been a busy six months, you know, tending to the pairings and monitoring them and looking for post ovulation sheds, etc. Most of my pairings are over by now. I still have a few left. There's some where I'm still holding out a little bit of hope. Of course, I know a few of these parents aren't going to be successful this year, but I always like to give them the most chance to make it happen. Typically, I keep my pairings together till about mid-June, so I'll keep them together for another couple weeks, just see what happens. So I'm just going to quickly go over my list here, make sure I get this right. So I said 14 pairings. Um, we had a nice litter of Pearl Island boas born last week, and I'll show you guys the babies in a few minutes, and they're doing great. That was a really nice early surprise. I wasn't expecting it that early, my earliest litter yet. And so as far as red tail boas, it's looking really good this year for Suriname and Peru, uh, including some second generation births from you know bloodlines I've been working with for over 10 years now, so really excited about those. I may even have multiple births for both Suriname and Peru. Um, my other red tails, my North Brazilian, I'm not entirely sure. I'll show you her in a minute. You know, I go back and forth. You know, she looks gravid, she looks like she's not gravid, so not sure on that one. My Guiana, I still have paired up, and typically my Guiana, who's bred twice for me before, has late litter, so I'm going to give them a little bit longer. And then I'm not really hopeful, unfortunately, on my Paraguay or my uh, Tomatama Venezuela boas. I don't think that's going to happen this year. As far as the non red tails, um, Hog Island Longicata and my Honduran Firebellies are looking like they're gravid. My Coops Pastel, I'm still holding out hope on, and I think they still might be going at it. The male's still interested in the female, so hopefully that'll be a later litter. Uh, and then, unfortunately, ones I don't feel likely this year, my Tarhumara and my Paraguanera Peninsula boas. It just doesn't look like that's going to happen, you know, unless uh, there's a miracle that happens in the next couple weeks. So they might be paired up again next year. So now I'm going to show you guys a few of my gravid females. Here's a possible litter I'm super excited about. This is a Suriname red tail, and this is actually. A, the first time I bred my two main bloodlines I've been working with. Uh, this is actually a female born in 2014 and I crossed her to a Prometheus bloodline male born in 2016. So my two main bloodlines. She, As you can see she, this is basically what she's been doing the last uh, month or month and a half. She just coils above her hot spot. She's looking quite swollen so Hopefully in, you know, probably late July, early August or so based on her post ovulation shed. Uh, just really looking forward to the possible litter here. And usually I've been just checking on my gravity females every day or two. Usually I just check their temperature. You can see the laser gun. She's reading uh, 89 degrees, which is a promising sign. Typically the females will be uh, reading in the upper 80s to about 90 degrees if they're gravid um, and actually I did a video recently on what I look for in gravid females usually it's pretty easy to tell and this one is definitely showing all the signs so fingers crossed another true red tail boa constrictor constrictor that's showing all the signs of being gravid is this Picalpa Peruvian female Actually not really that much to see like my Suriname female. She's just kind of hanging out, not moving around very much. She's actually gone into a shed cycle, which I think is not the post ovulation shed, but rather a uh, mid uh, gestation shed, which they sometimes have. Who knows, it could be the post ovulation shed, which would push the due date out by, you know, probably a month and a half or so. Fingers crossed on this one. We'll have some really nice 
the Kalpa Peruvian red tail boa was born sometime around the same time as the Surinams. Here's a red tail I'm not entirely sure about, and this is my North Brazilian red tail. She's been kind of showing some signs of being gravid, you know, like she's been coiling above the hot spot, but then she kind of moves around the cage. And you know, some females they do that, they don't spend all the time coiled up when they're gravid. And usually they'll thermal regulate and you know maybe come out to cool down a bit. And she, she overall she doesn't really look all that gravid. She's not really all that swollen. She's a little bit, but it's not you know it's not, definitely not a sure thing. So maybe she's got a small litter. I just don't know you know. So we'll just have to see. You know, give her some time and you know see what happens. Uh, if she's not gravid, we'll pair her up again next year. And you know, she's this is a, the first time I've tried to breed her. So sometimes it doesn't take the first time. You have to try again the next year. So hopefully we might have some North Brazilians. Uh, you know, but if you've been getting your hopes up for one from me this year, unfortunately, you know, I, it doesn't look like a sure thing at this point. Here's a non-red tail that litter that I'm super excited about. This is my Longicotta female. And she's showing all the signs of being rabid. You can see how swollen she looks. This is actually really exciting because last year in 2020, I tried to breed this animal, wasn't successful. Tried again this year and it looks like hopefully I'll have the desired outcome. But hopefully some Longicotta babies sometime in July, it's looking like. We'll just have to see, hopefully she's not full of slugs. But like my other gravid females, she just kind of hangs out doesn't really move around very much, which is definitely a promising sign. Here's a fairly rare locality boa, the Honduran Firebelly boa, and my female is definitely looking gravid. You can see pretty swollen looking, just kind of hanging out over the hot spot. And this female I bred twice before. Unfortunately, the last time in 2019, she delivered about three weeks early and there was a litter of 13 but uh, only two of them made it the rest were still born it was really heartbreaking so i'm just keeping my fingers crossed that she's not going to do that again this year because uh, there's just so few of these honduran fire bellies around it's just a absolute shame you know to lose any of them we need as many in captivity as possible if we want to keep these going so this one this is another litter that's hopefully due in july and I'm just checking on her, but you know, being really careful not to disturb her because um, I don't want any chance of having the early litter happen again. Although last year it just happened. I don't know why she seemed fine up until that it happened and she wasn't disturbed or fed or anything like that. She just dropped them about three weeks early. So we'll see what happens this year. Here's another pairing that I'm not exactly sure about, and you can see I still have them together. These are my Coops Pastel Colombian Boas. And the female is actually in a shed cycle right now. So I carefully noted when I first noticed she was looking opaque. And then I'll see when she sheds, because the post-ovulation shed cycle is longer than a typical shed cycle. Typically, it'll last around 10, 10 days, 10, 11 days or so, whereas a typical shed lasts anywhere from five to seven days before they shed after they go opaque. And it's not always, you know, 100% accurate. Sometimes it varies, but sometimes if you have a longer than normal shed, you can get an idea that your female has had her post ovulation shed. And so these animals have been together like the others since December. So it's been a long time and I definitely did notice interest in the male. In fact, he still looks like he's interested. Um, would have thought that you know these are Colombian boas supposedly they're easier than true red tails but to breed but you know every animal is individual so we'll have to see if it doesn't happen this year I can pair these up again next year uh, but my fingers are still crossed for a litter of Coops Colombian uh, boas. Now I want to show you some of my baby Pearl Island boas that were born just about a week or so ago and these guys are doing real well they actually just all shed in the last couple days. So the next thing will be to offer them some food, which I'm planning on doing later today after this video is done. Uh, you can see beautiful, almost patternless, with greatly reduced saddles. You can see they just don't like to sit still. They're really active animals, these saboge boas. But they're really docile. They no no signs of hissiness or aggression. 
and some really nice colors on them as well. Here's another Sabogue and I have seven of these. I actually did a quick sexing of them and it looks like I've got five males and two females so I'm really male heavy. Um, and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to keep any of these. Most of them, if not all of them, will be up for sale probably in about a month and a half or so. Just have to see. I might keep one or a pair depending on the mood I'm in. You know, I want to keep all my babies, but I've got to be realistic. I've got limits. You know, you can't keep them all. But you can see, real nice looking animal. Beautiful Sabogue Pearl Island Boa. Thought I'd show you what those guys might look like two years from now. This is a two-year-old full sibling holdback from my 2019 litter. You can see how beautiful this guy is. Of course, he's trying to get away like a Pearl Island should, being a highly arboreal species. And this guy is, he's about three and a half feet or so, doing real well. You can see the beautiful golden colors and this kind of burnt orangey brownish color on the tail saddles. Just love these animals. And there's a brief look at his head. Of course, he's not going to sit still. A lot of you guys have been asking me about how you can possibly acquire one or more of my boas for your collection. So I want to say a little bit about that now. So my animals are available on a first come, first serve basis. I don't do waiting lists, you know, for reasons I went over in a previous video. Um, but they're available once they're feeding and established, which is typically about one and a half to two months following their birth. I have to get, you know, several meals into them, make sure everyone's okay before they're off to their new homes. And so once they're up for sale, again, it's first come, first served. Uh, I do very generous uh, payment plans, you know, with 25% down to hold the animal. The remainder are due in about three months or whatever it works for you. I'm a little bit flexible. Um, I don't charge extra for the payment plans currently. So, you know, if you can't afford everything up front, you can use that to your advantage. As far as the upcoming litters, I showed you some of my gravid females. Of course, this doesn't guarantee I'm going to get uh, babies. You know, unfortunately, I might get slugs or I might just have a few babies. It's kind of hard to tell. But I do imagine that quite a few of these locali boas will be available probably in the late summer to early fall. And so whenever possible, I try to make videos of each litter as they're born. You know, sometimes I actually can capture them being born. Sometimes I just show you me processing the litter and, you know, taking the babies out and checking them out. So watch those, you know, that should give you a pretty good idea about what might come up for sale, you know, in another month and a half to two months. Also plan to do update videos showing you the babies as they're becoming established. And then I'll let you know when they go up for sale. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to offer my babies for sale this year. You know, in the past I've offered them over on faunaclassifieds.com, so I might do that. But we'll just have to see. So please stay tuned and, you know, all the information I'll let you know as soon as I have it available. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it was somewhat helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.